Hi, welcome to GP.NET Tutorials. My name is Bahrudin and this is the lesson 2 of GP.NET Tutorial. In this lesson, we are going to talk about GP.NET and machine learning. As you know, machine learning is a set of algorithms which teaches computer how to do something without explicitly programming to do. The process of ML consists of searching the data to recognize some sort of pattern. The recognizing process can be defined as process of computer learning. Once the patterns are recognized, the computer can make predictions for unseen data based on achieved and persisted knowledge. GP.NET supports supervised machine learning and this type of machine learning will be of our interest. In supervised machine learning, the learning process consists of finding the rule that maps input features to output labels. During the learning process, available data can be divided on two sets, the training data set and testing or validating data set. The training set is used for training and collecting the knowledge from the data. The second set is called validation or testing set, which the learning algorithm uses for testing against overfitting. This lesson will show you quickly how GP.NET solve all three kinds of machine learning problems by using one of several pre-calculated models included in GP.NET installation package. Supervised machine learning can be divided to regression, binary classification and multi-class classification. GP.NET supports all three kinds of supervised machine learning and most of those problems can be modeled by GP.NET. Regression problems in machine learning can be described as recognizing the pattern between input parameters and output variable when the output variable is a continuous numeric value. Pre-calculated projects in the start page are grouped by the same machine learning type so the user can select the project from the different supervised machine learning group. For example, in case the user wants to see a regression example, the GP.NET version 5 contains several pre-calculated projects like simple regression, concrete slump test, etc. Let's select and click simple regression example. Once the user is clicked on the sample link, the project tree item is shown in the project explorer. Once we click the project name, the data set of, of the simple regression projects is shown. The data tab page contains all data related to selected project. The data set is arranged in columns where for each column can be defined several metadata options. Column names are generated automatically in case the column header is not provided during the data import. Otherwise, column names are imported from the data. The first option is column type. Each column can be of numeric, binary and category type. The last string type means the column will be ignored in modeling. In case of category option, is selected, the encoding type must be selected too, but this option will be explained later. The next option is a variable type, which indicates how column will be treated in context of machine learning. All columns can be feature or input parameters, and one column can be label or output variable. In case of regression, the output column must be numeric. Data scaling is the next option. It scales numeric column by selected method. There are two scaling options. Min-max normalization, which scales column values into numeric segment from 0 to 1. It is known as normalization date. The second option is standardization, which scales column numeric values so that the column average value is 0. This is well-known Gauss standardization option. The third option is known which means no data scaling during modeling. The next option is handling missing value. There are several options which replace missing values with selected option. In case the user select average option, 
all missing value in the column will be replaced with the average value. The user defines those options for one column at a time. Missing value can be grouped for numeric and category columns. Since there is no descriptive statistics for category data, in that case, other options like mode, random can be used. So to remember, in order to define a regression learning by GP.NET, the user must define one column to be output variable, and the output variable must be of numeric type. In case no output column is defined or more than one output columns are defined, the exception will be true during the creating model. For the simple regression problem we selected previously, all columns are numeric and column type for each column is set to numeric. Also, there is no missing value, so the missing option is set to none. All columns are set to input parameters, except the last column which is output variable. Before creating model, the user can divide the data set into training and testing parts by selecting the number of sample for testing at the bottom of the window. Beside number of records, user can set up testing data by providing percentage number of dataset records when the second radio box is checked. Every project has project info tab page, which shows important information about the project. Once all data preparation is set up, the user can create a new model by clicking the new model button. In case user wants to update existing model, update button should be pressed and then select existing model name.